I've been, I've seen the home, I've seen the water, I've seen the mountains, you know, it, uh, it looks like a pretty, you know, it looks like a nice place to live. Beautiful place to live, awesome, but you know, what an opportunity to get to be out around this, this entire wonderful country and meet the most amazing people who are in, so enthused about positive change that they know is coming and to get to work with John McCain and, and this whole team, it, it's just been absolutely amazing. But it's retail politics. I mean, it's, it's hitting it's hitting different groups, hitting different states. It's interesting. It's not uh, you know when, when you watch, when you look at it on TV, it's so different than when you actually see the the handshaking, talking to the people. Yeah, that's true. Um, issues. Um, you know, it, it, the American people. There aren't many issues that they haven't heard everybody talk about so far. But uh, you know, this is a, we're at the contest stage, obviously, and. Uh, and now, you know, if, if, you, if you win on Tuesday, you have to start thinking about how you represent people who may, you may not have agreed with you. How do you do that? Oh, sure. How, how, I mean, we always hear this sort of uniter stuff, but how do you, how do you reach out to them? That is people? a great question, and, and that's where my experience as an executive gets plugged in. It, as mayor, of course, you're working in a nonpartisan, bipartisan manner all the time. You're filling potholes, and you're, you're making sure your police department is fully funded. You're, you're taking care of the people whom you are serving, never letting obsessive partisanship get on that level get in the way of just doing what's right. And then on the state level, too, as governor, being able to reach out across party lines, uh, me appointing Democrats and independents and Republicans in my administration, got the track record to prove that that's the way I operate is getting along with those who perhaps um, don't agree on every single issue, but um, that's what you got to do, especially in this time of great challenge for America. That, that's what we have to do. And John McCain, of course, is the leader on that front, too, being the maverick, taking on his own party when he had to, taking shots from the other party, too. He's got the scars to prove it. He, he's that leader on um, bringing everybody together, uh, uniting everyone. A solid front is what America needs at this time to win the war and to get this economy back on the right track. And he's going to be able to do this. But no matter who wins, on Tuesday is that 50 percent of the people are going to be really unhappy. I mean, no, you know, there's just 50 percent, and it's going to take a lot of mending. I mean, it's like, you know, for different issues, issues that, yeah, that, uh, you know, 50 percent of the country agree with on you, and, you know, let, let's pick an issue like maybe global warming or something like that, is that somehow now, now you're not just really talking to people who agree with you. You've got to convince people that to, to work things out. How do you do that? You know, we hear about uniting, but how do you do that? Well, you start by not discrediting or invalidating someone because of a position that maybe they take that you are in disagreement with you learn from them and you do you're able to find middle ground on so many of these issues like global warming the causes of but more importantly what do we do about it to clean up our planet there is always a way to work with another person and again I think that it, it bodes well to where we're going here with um, for our family that's quite diverse uh, different politics all mixed into our, our family that's been a good solid foundation for me understanding how maybe we disagree on some of the particulars on an issue. We don't have to be screaming at each other, though. Let's find a way to work together and solve a problem. That's what we've done in our family and um, in my businesses and also uh, in governance. It's sort of interesting that there are a couple jobs in government that have no job description. One is uh, first lady, you know, whoever, you know, each first lady sort of defines it herself. Um, well, you're going to have to maybe define, you know, what the husband does with vice president. Um, but the vice president also doesn't have sort of defined. We've seen uh, uh, Vice President Gore, he sort of made it more active, and uh, Vice President Cheney has, has he's assumed certain uh, roles. There. Well, what's your idea of what, what, what do you sort of envision the job as? Well, they've got to be exclusively, of course, concentrating on the administrative side of, of governance. And um, there again, that's where my executive experience will be put to good use. But John McCain and I have spoken a lot about the missions that we'll be on together and about where he would like to see me lead and energy independence is, is first and foremost what I will be able to help in a supportive role, be able to help him get this nation firmly on that path towards energy independence and it's paramount that we do this otherwise we're going to be continually reliant on foreign sources of energy circulating hundreds of billions of dollars a year into foreign countries instead of right here creating jobs here with domestic 
domestic solutions for drilling and mining safely and alternative sources of energy being tapped into right here. So energy independence will be something that I lead on. And that, of course, is coming from my experience as an oil and gas regulator and governor of the large, huge energy producing state of Alaska. I'll be able to do that. But also our, our mission that he wants me to help lead on also with the transformation of government that is so necessary right now, reforming it, putting it back on the side of the people so that Americans will never believe that they have to be working for government, that government is to be working for the American people. So working on that. And then helping the families who have children with special needs. Another mission that I'll be on. Look forward to working on that too. Something horrible would happen. It ended up being president. I mean, not, not through the usual pr procedure, but the, the, un the unusual. Um, uh, if, if you got that three o'clock in the morning call, I mean, whatever it may be, whether it's uh, some country being actively hostile against Israel or something, uh, what's the process? What you, sort of how, how would you go about? What's the first thing you do when you get that three o'clock phone call? You assemble your national security team right then, and of course, everybody is always going to be standing by, ready to assist. But you do not blink when you have to make a decision to defend the home front, to defend American lives. And um, that is, of course, the top of any president and, and vice presidential team's agenda is to protect American people. So in not blinking there, you in assembling your team and your advisors, you make the right call and you make sure that Americans are protected. When you talk to uh, Senator McCain, is it mostly about strategy or are you talking big picture right now? Uh, both both, but um, not so much strategy about the campaign at all, because uh, we both are so confident that we are on, on the right path, and in these final days of the campaign, we, we're acknowledging that people are understanding the stark contrast between the two tickets, and, and that's good. This is, this is the place we need to be right here, still as a bit of an underdog in these last few days, but realizing that Americans are really starting to hear what our opponents are talking about when they talk about spreading the wealth, taking more from our small business businesses and from our families and then redistributing the other people's hard-earned money according to a politician's priorities. That, that, is, that is not good for this uniquely American pro-entrepreneurial system that we have that has allowed our country to be the greatest country on earth. We realize that more and more Americans are, are starting to, to, to see the light there and understand the contrast. And um, we talk a lot about, okay, we're confident that we're going to win on Tuesday. So from there, those first hundred days, how are we going to kick in the plan that will get this economy back on the right track and really shore up the strategies that we need over in Iraq and Iran to win these wars? Now, today, I don't know if you know, Governor uh, Richardson uh, said $120,000 uh, was the middle class cut up. I don't know, is that a gap or do you think that's their position? Because a oh. big difference, I mean, we can all do gaps. Right. You know, we're all guilty of those now. No, it's, I don't think it's a gap. What, it, it's confirmation that it's, it's been, a, I think, a phony economic plan released by Barack Obama that at first, remember, was $250,000 and you're not going to be hit with a, a tax increase. Then it dropped down to, what, two hundred, and now uh, from Joe Biden, his, his acknowledgement, and now all the way down to 120, I think it was, that, that we've heard today, 120, 150. Um, before you know it, we're going to be back down to that, that annual income of $42,000 a year that Barack Obama has already supported, seeing increased taxes on people, hardworking American uh, individuals making just $42,000 a year. It's been, I think, a phony plan in these terms. He has not been candid with the electorate in, in terms of what the details are in his economic plan until Joe the plumber finally got him to say what, in plain language, are your intentions for these higher taxes. And of course, he says, uh, essentially, it's to spread the wealth. She tough, Todd? She's tough. I've learned to, to just get out of her way when she's on a mission. <laughs> Is she tough? Yeah. Is she the disciplinarian? Uh, yeah. Do you know what that means? No. <laughs> is she boss? Is she boss? Mm -hmm. I don't know who's really the boss when it comes to making sure you're doing your homework and brushing your teeth. Who's the boss? You. Oh, I thought you were going to say him. Okay, we're a team on that one. What, by the way, what do you want to do when you grow up? Have you thought about it? Um, what do you think you want to be, darling? That's right, you got lots of time to think about it.